Hey guys, it's Matt. I'm watching Pam's Gouda this week. Uh, this was the cat that started it all. Uh, Pam got two cats, Cooper and Gouda, in 2012. I was allergic to cats at the time. I started watching them a lot, as I do now, because Pam travels. Um, I had no idea that I would become a cat person. This is the cat that started it all. And um, I keep a cat tree in this room. Uh, literally, he's only here four or five times a year. And I keep a cat tree for him. Um, he gets pampered big time. That's a strange opening to a video, Matt. What is this video going to be about? I have no idea. As of right now, I have no idea. I do know one thing. Does the not milk ever disappoint? There's not one subject I ever looked into that didn't bring the 33s, that didn't bring the 9 paired with the other number, that didn't bring endless conspiracy and endless breadcrumbs. It's never disappointed. These are the real benefits and advantages of a fake world. These are the two from Shallow How. He's like, later tonight when you're hugging your pillow, this is the scene where he says about Rosemary, he says, you see that hot number out there? You see that little thing? I'm with her. So, I don't like Jack Black at all, but I do like Shallow Hal. I don't know where to start. Let's start off with one of Bill's posters. Now, Bill was moved and inspired by Sunday's free voice video to make this poster. And I had forgotten about Nixon opening up China. I'd even talk about that in the free voice video about the artificial rise of China, highlighting Wham, George Michael, and Andrew Ridgely's trip in 1985. George Ridgely and Andrew Michael should thank Nixon, who opened it up for all of us in 1972. There wouldn't be no wham, rap, wham, bam, I am a man, jabba, no job. What does it say? How do you know the lyrics to wham, rap? That's sad. I don't know. It, we can all thank Nixon. I'll go back to Bill's poster in just a second, of course. A picture's worth a thousand words. I could do two hours just on that poster. I typed in, when did Nixon go to China? And I didn't get no AI overview. I was quite disappointed. I just got this. From February 21 to 28, 1972, U.S. President Richard Nixon traveled to Beijing, Hangzhou. Hangzhou? Is that made up? What is that? And Shanghai. Almost as soon as the American president arrived in the Chinese capital, that would be Beijing to you and me, CCP chairman Mao Zedong beck beckoned him for a quick meeting. So let me get this straight. I didn't get the AI overview, but this is what Google returned immediately. So just gave me two sentences and one really doesn't make any sense and is wrong. So they didn't have no meeting set up. Really? Two sentences and part of it's wrong. So as soon as he arrived, Mao beckoned him for a quick meeting. They they had no time. Matt, this is 1972 China. They ain't got no phones. They got tin cans with strings. This is implying, I think they had phones. This is implying they didn't have no phones. And Mal's like, oh, Nixon's here? Why didn't somebody tell me? This is ridiculous. Let's go back to Bill's poster for a few minutes that I've self-titled Bobbing for Toadstools. And if you're at work or forklift driving or long haul trucking or you're on a phone, try to remember if you can to go back and look at Bill's posters whenever we cover them on a larger monitor. You, you just can't see it if you don't have a computer. See the details that he puts in here. I call it self-titled Bobbing for Toadstools. They went from this in 1972, and you saw basically the same China in the freevoice.io video with Andrew Ridgely and George Michael strolling through the marketplace and everybody looking for opium and the woman that couldn't put her tongue in the mouth. That was still basically the old China from 1972. Uh, what color suits we got in here? We got the gray, we got the blue. What else? We got the gray, we got the blue. When Andrew was there and George Michael was basically still the old China. Now, at that point, of course, from Nixon's visit and probably back to Albert Pike, China at that point had been chosen to be the world's manufacturer. Matt, are you, you're, by saying chosen, you're implying there's no free marketplace and there's some group at a creepy table that makes choices for the entire world. You think? I mean, I'm not implying anything. That's what, that's what we've been saying here uh, for years. Of course, it was planned out. But, but Matt, was everything planned out by Albert Pike? Pretty much. Um, he went from this, which I call bobbing for toadstools. They, and they're, they're poison. My, I don't, do you call mushrooms around the backyard toadstools? My grandparents said, don't touch those toadstools. They're not mushrooms. Is that a common thing? Or is it just like Northeast Pennsylvania, Philly? toadstools, the mushrooms that grow with the fungus and stuff that you can't eat. That's what we call them here. I don't know if that's common or not. 
So all they got in 1972 is gray suit, blue suit, bobbing for toadstools. They had nothing. They ain't got no Netflix. They ain't got no blockbuster videos. And then just in a short period, Nixon goes and opens up China. It's open for business now. You want Taco Bell? Oh, oh, sure. Yeah. The, and it says there in the was it your family in the middle and your family and friends <laughs> don't notice a damn thing. They just think, oh, Nixon, see, it would have continued to just be gray suit, blue suit. Nixon went in there and he had a very important meeting with Mao. Is it, what is it? Zedong, was it? Z, I think. Z-E means the. You do the math on that. Z-E, Zedong. Um, he says, you need to open this place up. You could be the world's manufacturer. And Mao went, you think? Really? I never considered that. Make me an offer. And Nixon said, well, Nixon said, well, here, if, if you mobilize, Mao, listen up, Mao, lean in here, Mao. If you mobilize your slave labor in the right way, we can promise you 95% of the world's manufacturing on every single product. What? 95%? What about Ghana and Kenya and Ivory Coast and Honduras and Guatemala and Bangladesh and all these other... Pl we can promise you 95%. Well, what about all those other countries that will compete for the world's manufacturing at the top corporations? He's like, we got it all worked out. Guatemala? Fuck them. Honduras? We decide where the, all the corporations see. Mal, we're going to share some things with you you might not be privy to. It's all one. The same people that put me in office as the U.S. president put you in office. You didn't realize that. Now you do. Now you're going to manufacture everything from the ceramic cats right up to the chips that go in the F-16s that haven't even been invented yet. And Mao said, oh, this is, I'm glad I put that cultural revolution into place. And Nixon said, how many dead? And Mao said, about 55 million. You see, when one person is gunned down like this news clipping that I pulled up, one person in the street, that's called murder. That's really bad. But if you could do it to tens of millions, you could call it a cultural revolution. And in many respects, it'll be celebrated. So I don't know who this perp is on the street here. He could have turned around to the police and said, wait a second, I'm not done yet. How many do I have to do? How many do I have to grease out here to make it a cultural revolution? And the police stop and said, you going for a cultural revolution? If you just do two or three more, we got to arrest you. You do it to enough. It's a cultural revolution. We got to let you go. In fact, you'll make it into all the history books. And the, that's what all the... Listen to... All the perps in South Central, listen to the words coming out of my mouth. Call it a cultural revolution. Confuse the heck out of the arresting officers and the judges. What does this headline say? At least one dead after shooting in historic South Central LA. What bot wrote this? This doesn't make any sense. There's no historic district in South Central LA. Trust me, I've been there. I've been to the corner of Florence and Normandy. Is that where Reginald Denny got his head beaten up with a, with a brick? I've been the 110 through that horrible neighborhood. I got dumped out on the Imperial Highway once going to the airport because everything was blocked off. I said, you got to exit the highway. I ain't exiting the highway down here in Watts. Luckily, it was only 7.30 in the morning. Everyone was still asleep. I got the hell out of there. There ain't no historic district like Old San Juan, Puerto Rico. You go to Puerto Rico, they have Old San Juan, the old bricks, the old stone, the old Tijuana. They don't got that in South Central LA. Just bars in the window. I don't know what... Sorry, I don't know what this headline's talking about. But th the point is, if you could, if the, these perps <laughs> could do it to enough people, you call it a cultural friggin' revolution, and you, you'll be celebrated in the history books. So let me bring Bill's poster back for one minute or less just to wrap this segment up before we move on. So it went from this back in 1972 through George Michael, which was gray suit, blue suit. Everybody's got Pee Wee Herman, bicycle, egg roll carts, yaks and donkeys in the street, which I call in general the bobbing for toadstool lifestyle to what it is today, where China says, we make everything, we own everything, we own you, all the sophisticated parts for your military basically come from China. Oh, you and Boeing and everything, you glue them together, you put them together so you can say it's made in America, but all the sophisticated technology and all the engineering comes from China, and we fund all your Hollywood, and we own all the gold, and we basically are going to threaten to take out the US dollar, all of course part of the one world script, China on its own, if anybody's new here, China on its own isn't doing anything. It's all part of a grand script in case anybody's new from Skokie. But from this to this, see, it's impossible. The rise of China is impossible.
And this has never been mentioned. The Chinese people, of course, don't see any bit of it. I mean, it's completely normal. I've talked to many Chinese people that have been living in the States for even 10 or 15 years. It's just they're very, very proud, almost arrogant, very proud of what they've been able to accomplish, don't see in any way it being possible that they were slated or chosen to be the world's manufacturer. They just did it and outcompeted the rest of the world. And the, the Chinese people are, of course, are just as fooled uh, as anyone else. And the reason for me mentioning is you, you talk to certain Chinese in this country that have only been here 5 or 10 or 15 years. And, you know, I don't really want to use the word arrogant, but there's in a way, yeah, it's like, look what we've been able to do. Uh, sorry, <laughs> no. Uh, there's, there's goes back to the Knights Templar, probably. You were chosen to be the world's manufacturer. Um, and, you know, you should maybe check the arrogance. Uh, I just wanted to mention that before we close out this segment. I got to show you this briefly, guys. No, this isn't a stove or won't turn into a stove video, but YouTube knows to show me that everything related to building something that creates heat, any sort of outdoor fireplace, or it shows me everything related to uh, makeshift wood stoves, as you know. Okay, so this pops up at one of the original old videos about masonry heaters. Put a bunch of bricks together. They're called masonry heaters. All right. Well, obviously, YouTube's going to show this to me. And I'm like, wow, this is one of the original old films from the Masonry Heater Association of America. I click on it and look what it does. The video is called Historic Introduction to Masonry Heaters. And the YouTube channel is American Masonry Heaters and Ovens. And it look what it did. It puts in the Freemasonry banner. Really? <laughs> I mean, this is, it's the whole videos about fires and come on. I mean, I wouldn't give bot, I wouldn't give a squirt of piss for your ass right now. Oh, there's a chance this could be about Freemasonry or you make. I had to call them the Rothen. Remember the Rothensteiner Steiners. If I say the word, it puts a banner. Oh, let me take you to the real truth. Ignore what this video is saying. I'll put a banner underneath. It'll tell you what is real. It'll tell you to ignore the, <laughs> those conspiracy people. Then my friend Tony can say, you guys made a video and underneath it put a banner because your video was so out there, so insane that YouTube had to direct people to the real truth to make sure they don't become one of you people. It put a Freemasonry banner, which I've also called at times a marquee under a video on heaters and ovens. Bot, I wouldn't give a squirt of piss for your ass right now. And even at this channel, there might be a first grade truth or crying out, look, Matt, the bricks, the bricks, are, that's a free, <laughs> that's a Freemasonry sign. And the banner adds, uh, that's the lowest and most pathetic thing I've ever heard in a truth video in the perhaps 15 years I've been doing this. Those that call out, there's bricks in the background. That's a Freemason symbol. Uh, there's like a hundred million buildings in the world that are made of brick and double that in terms of brick walkways. Whenever you see brick, I'm sorry, no, it's not a Freemasonry sign. Oh my God, the bullshit that we went through in our slog to get out of the bog. That's because Matt works with bricks. I had a, f I had a few comments, believe it or not, through a, those people are of course immediately removed from the channel. He works with bricks. You see that little thing out there? You see that little number? Later tonight when you're hugging your pillow? Remember, I'm with her. <laughs> These guys are looking out. At, it's, Matt, it's not that great of a movie. I think it is. Rest in peace, my man, Lee Boy. Rest in peace. I'm not making fun in any way. I love this character from Shallow Hal. I love the actor. Shallow Hal's Joshua Shintani, dead at 32, of pneumonia in Hawaii. Immortal words. Uh, yeah, we'll blend in. Rest in peace, Lee Boy. I'm, I would never make fun. No, I'm not joking. I love this character. In this segment, I want to use Bill's Two Asses in a Nation poster to zoom in on certain segments to show you some of the detail that he puts in to these posters. Now, this is going to be very difficult for long-haul truckers, forklift operators, people at work. I won't spend too much time here because I know many people really can't look at the detail or even you're on a phone. So I'll try to talk this through the best that I can. I just want to give those on a computer an idea of the level of detail he puts in here. If anybody's new, two asses in a nation, what happened to Donald Trump or supposedly happened via what the news lied about recently. Two asses in a... There was an ass-ass in 
a nation attempt on Donald Trump. You, you understand where this is going, right? If anybody's new, the first one, what, what do we come up with? We call it the what we call the failed earring, right? You go to the mall, you there's that gun or something, a gun at the mall, bot. You go, it puts an earring through the lobe. It's a it, the, the failed earring is the first one, and the second one, of course, we've settled on a rifle in the woods. Let's start by zooming in on the top right quadrant of the poster. And long haul truckers, I can talk you through this. You still listen to baseball games on the radio? Are you watching the game? No, so we can do this. In the middle of the candidates is a guy sticking his head up his own ass, and he would be the guy begging you to go vote. Then the candidates are on each side, both with the faces of a butt or an ass. In the front there, down at the bottom, is the magic bullet from the JFK, two asses in a nation. But Bill, one thing here, you have Beavis burnt in to the podiums, which are actually some sort of crates from which the candidates are standing behind. They're not podiums, they're like crates, something which you would say package up fireworks in. What you'd want to do here, Bill, is either put Beavis on one and Butthead on the other, but because they're both Buttheads, the candidates are both asses, two asses in a nation, both Buttheads, you want Butthead burnt in here, Bill, not Beavis <laughs> burnt in here, but that's okay. It's the first... Out with it, Junior! It's the first mistake Bill has ever made on a poster. And I make a lot of stuttering mistakes. Do you see Zabruder? Do you see Zabruder behind the butthead off to the right in the, in the black? Did you catch it with Zabruder back there? The first interview, just an hour after the event, was local KT, whatever news uh, Dallas uh, was in. We have, what was it? Abra we have uh, Abraham uh, Zaputa. He says, Zaputa. And you you filmed it. This is just an hour later. He's like, yeah, my, my secretary told me to go back and get the camera. I went to get some pixels. I took some pictures at a, took some pictures at a president. Then he, and he laughs a few times, as, as they all do. The duping, that's duping delight, Matt. I've never heard that before. What did you call it? Duping delight? It's my first truth video. I've never heard that before. That well, in a, in a way it is. They, they the the reality though. It's not. It's not like these bad cr catastrophe thespians. The reality in a way has to show you the truth for those for the person in the middle that don't have their head up their own ass. Zooming in on the top left, we see the Texas Book Suppository Building, and just above it looks like a Happy Days poster. You know the TV show, but it says "Not so happy, not milk days." <laughs> not so happy, not milk days with the cast of Happy Days. You know, Fonzie and Potsy and Ralph and, oh, there's Richie. Is that Ron Howard? He became basically the Tom Hanks of directing for the Not Nilk. If the Not Nilk really wanted to secure some false history to the minds of the people, it went out and it got Ron Howard, that villain. And I'm sure we've all seen the YouTube video, Happy Days Hell. On set was not as jovial and as jolly as it looks. And what is, is that Matt? Matthew McConaughey there, Bill, with the white t-shirt. Um, he's got the JFK t-shirt on. At first, it's just JFK resting his arms. I thought literally JFK was holding a, um, let's just say a biffle, his biffle, and pointing it back up at the window. Now, that would be a heck of a t-shirt. I just gave somebody a really good, maybe TJ, a really good t-shirt idea. JFK holding his, his biffle, that's the way I have to say it, trying to point it back up at the window. That would sell. In this particular zoom in, we have the two hippies off to the left saying, dude, is that the infamous magic bullet marching towards the grassy knoll? Bill's in love with the magic bullet. He loves to put the magic bullet into the posters. I love talking about the magic bullet in relation to the false term grassy knoll. The knot milk is very rudimentary in a way in terms of how it plants and lays down its history and how it cements, how it cements it into the minds of the people. But it's also evil genius and brilliant. It plants little seeds, little seeds that you can't get out of your head that are always attached and help cement or emulsify the event. In the case of JFK in Dallas, it was the term grassy knoll. Now, we've made fun of it many times, and we're going to continue to make fun of it here. No one had ever heard that term before. Now, it just rolls off the tongue. It just seems normal. Well, some people say the shooter came from behind the grassy knoll. People have conversations in bars like the word grassy knoll is normal because we've heard it our entire lives. Right after the event, they started slowly. 
Maybe Walter Cronkite just one time used the word grassy knoll very quickly, but then over time it was used thousands of times, then millions of times. Somehow the term then, of which would have been completely strange to people, became part of the normal United States vernacular, whatever that means, where again today just grassy knoll seems normal. But let's just say it popped up out of the blue today. You'd be walking by somebody on the street. And, Wait, did, did, what did you just say? I'm sorry to interrupt your conversation and you don't know me, but uh, d- did you just talk about some, a grassy knoll? What the hell is that? It's so strange, the term. But the knot milk made, habituated an entire population to the term and used it to help cement the false event. It really is an evil genius. If anybody's new, you may wonder what my opinion is on what exactly happened that day. And I'll tell you what happened that day. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. See, it's a pretty simple and rudimentary tactic when you're able to see through it, yet evil genius at the same time. All the endless conspiracy. There have been books and videos and hundreds of papers written about all the possibilities as to where the magic, not in this case magic, but any bullet came from. All the conspiracy by itself regarding the grassy knoll. All of it adds up to cementing into the minds of people that something happened. But we just don't know exactly what. Did Oswald act alone? And all the, all this conspiracy, everybody ultimately has the same result or conclusion where it matters most to not milk. That something actually happened and a president was, you know. Um, the, the point is, with nothing, with nothing happened. <laughs> so all the, all the different... Per, 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 with it, Junior! All the different possibilities, permutations and conspiracy, all points to the same place, to the people analyzing it. Well, something happened, and what happened was real. We just don't know exactly how. That's the only thing that Not Nilk cares to protect. It's an evil genius, Not Nilk. If you're listening to me, though, a few of us are on to you. We've looked at this many times, and I just referenced it a few minutes ago. Zabruder's sitting there with a local news anchor an hour and a half. After, not weeks after, an hour and a half to two hours after, he says he filmed it. Oh, by the way, look to the left. Oh, they just happen to have a picture, picture of him in the stands with his camera. I mean, come on there. Whether Maybe he posed for this later, but come on. They always happen to just have the right pictures in place. The point is, it gets right back to the Triple X scene. Vin Diesel, the movie Triple X, was actually a pretty fun movie. That My favorite, the diner scene where Triple X says to the waitress, or about the waitress, if she ain't real, then this whole thing ain't real. And the same thing applies to Abraham here in this interview, just an hour and a half to two hours later. If he's not real or he's not convincing, then there's no way any part of it can be real. They go hand in hand. If he's not showing any PTSD, any trauma, any real emotion, from what he apparently or supposedly witnessed, whether his eye was behind the camera lens or not. He would have witnessed some some gruesome event. This is supposedly a beloved president. There would be some sort of PTSD, some sort of trauma. He exhibits nothing, zero. And if he ain't real, then none of it can be real. It is literally that simple. And the first great truth of right about this time is crying out in the night. Matt, it's your responsibility to remind people that Abraham Zabruder, we believe, was a 33rd degree. For... Oh, really? Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, because I want everybody to focus on particular and specific bad guys. Oh, there's Matt making excuses again for the Freeman. He makes excuses for the Jays. No, uh, as I said millions of times, and I'll continue to say it. And if you're an old guard and you're getting tired of hearing it, sorry. I have to cater to the fifth graders, getting them to 10th, 11th, and 12th grade to eventually someday graduate and get out of the bog. If you're focused on a specific bad guy or blaming a specific bad guy like the Jays or the Freeman or what or the OTO or the Golden Dawn or the Knights of Malta or all these different groups or the Knights Templar, if you're focused on a bad guy, you are playing into its hands and doing exactly what it wants. Okay? I do mention it just because I heard the first grade truthers crying out in the night, so I mention it. The, the Not Milk has a lot of different types of minions. So what? Okay, Matt, but while you have this picture up, aren't you going to make fun of it for at least 30 seconds or a minute? Y- yeah, I'm going to pretend somebody asked me, and I'd like to make fun of it. I really would. I can't resist. 
my, uh, my, my, my secretary you know, he, he suggested I go b- b- back to the office and get my camera to take some pictures. Uh, I, got a, I, I was shooting the president. We heard a, a loud shot. <laughs> did, 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 do you think they recycle the same sorts of lines that they put in, say, the Legolas event? That, that's Orlando, Orlando Bloom. They say, oh, it sounded like firecrackers. It sounded like party poppers. It's always the same thing. Did Mike, Mike the, you know what, Mike the cock from, uh, let's just say, the gambling town event, did he? It sounded like firecrackers. And then my buddy, my buddy took their, then we knew it was for real. <laughs> they have the same lines. It probably, I forget this. You know, I've watched this many times. I didn't just watch it. He probably uses the same recycled lines <laughs> that they use in all of these events. It's just, look, the not milk, it, you know, maybe it is some sort of AI or whatever. It has to give itself away. It has to give clues. It's It's always recycling the same sorts of themes and, I mean, it's a joke to us. The people around us, I mean, they just, come on, they they think we're absolutely insane at this point. They'll never see it. And as the ship sails further and further away down the river of insanity, things will look even stranger to us, but look even more normal to those on the ship asking Isaac for another drink and the divide between us and our friends and family, folks, look look forward to this over the next few years. It's actually going to grow further apart. There's no way around it. The ship will continue to sail. They're in the middle of the ship, and we are rowing in the opposite direction. To me, I remind myself, that's the greatest news of all time. Thanks for listening.